Okay, so I had a lot of teacher friends asking me to go ahead and do the tutorial about how to use Screencastify to make a digital read aloud. So I know that I had never heard of Screencastify a month and a half ago, but this digital learning situation that we've been in has definitely taught me a lot of new tools that are out there and how exciting they are in ways that we can use them to do things and also which ones work better than others. Um, I started out here just making videos on my phone and then uploading them and trying to put them together and get them out there for the kids. But I was never super happy with it and it took forever to do. And then I met Screencastify and the neat thing about this app is it is all on your computer and it's all together. So when you download Screencastify onto your computer, it can take video of you talking and show what's happening on your computer screen. It can take a video of your face and it's got a built-in editor that you can take these clips and put them together in one seamless um, video. Super easy, super intuitive. And then upload it to your drive, download it to your computer, or send it to YouTube or somewhere, all from one spot on your computer. So you don't have to like pull it from three different directions, which is super, super fun. So I have been using this in second grade to do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because that's our big end of the year thing we do that we read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory chapter by chapter with our kids. And it's been really nice to be able to use Screencastify to have that experience with these second graders even though they're not actually in the classroom with us. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my computer now and show you on my screen what it would look like to use Screencastify to do that. All right, so the very first thing you need to do is you have to download Screencastify. And what you go to do is you go to screencastify.com. And when you get there, there should be an Add to Chrome button. And you're just going to go ahead and download it. And when you click that, you're just going to follow the directions that they ask. And you're going to add it to your Chrome. But you're putting an extension on your um Google Chrome, which is really good. What it's going to do when you get it all downloaded just the way they want you to do is it's going to put a little icon on your screen. And that'll be really what you're looking for. So you're going to sync it. You're going to just follow the directions, go through it. And you can remove it from Chrome anytime you need to. But the icon you're looking for is this little blue one. Okay, and so that's what you're going to go ahead and do. And that is how you get into Screencastify to use. So the next thing that you have to do is you would need to go ahead and um, if you're going to use your Google Drive, which is a great place to store video, you can always download video onto your computer. But I like to store it in my Google Drive just because I know I'll always have it. So you're going to sign in with Google so that you know that it's always going to be part of that. And then they'll create its own folder for you. And then you're going to set some permissions. You want to be able to use the camera and the microphone. You want to be able to use drawing and annotation in case you ever want to use this to actually draw with it. I haven't used that yet, but I always give the permissions for it. And then you're going to go, you can go ahead and put that you're an educator and what level you are in. I'm a grade level teacher. And that's it. Now you're ready to use Screencastify anytime. Super easy. So now that you have downloaded the um, actual Screencastify, you have this little icon right here. It has a pink arrow with a little video um, movie camera icon in it. And when you click on that, you'll actually see your choices to record. So once you've clicked on it, what you've got is this window here. And this is your three choices for how you want to record. You can record your browser tab, you can record your desktop, or you can record using your webcam only. And what's nice about this is you have options. So I always start out my read alouds with the webcam because I want my kids to have that chance to connect to me and say, hey, that's my teacher. So let me show you how we're going to do that. You're going to click webcam. Make sure your microphone is on because you want to be able to record your voice talking to them too. And then you're going to hit record. 
All right, so when you push record, it takes you right to your webcam, and this is what it looks like. It's not the best definition, but it definitely gets the job done. And you're actually coming right from the top of your computer screen right there, and so that's kind of where you look at. I'm always distracted by myself talking, and I'm sure other people have that feeling too, but I try to remember to put my eyes up there on the camera so the kids feel I'm talking to them. Um, and so at this point, all you have to do is record what you want to say to your kids before you do your read aloud. And like I said, this would be like a great place to do like a read aloud. Like if you actually had things you want to show them, you could totally do this and you could just do it all on your webcam. But like I said, I like to show them the text as well. So here I go. This is going to be my little intro. So here we go. Hi, boys and girls. I'm so glad to see you today. Guess what? Today's our last day of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We get to find out what happens at the end. I am so excited. It's been such a fun journey. And now we're going to finish our book. All right, second graders, I'm going to turn on our story. I want to make sure your eyes are on text and that you are reading along with me as much as you can. All right, here we go. All right, so this is what you get when you stop. You're going to actually see your little clip. It's right here, and you can watch yourself and critique yourself and all those fun things you do when you see yourself on video. All right, so when you push record, it takes you right to your webcam. And this is. All right, so when you push record. But you get to see your little clip, and it is in different places. It is already on your Google Drive if you've connected that. And you can see here, you can download it very easily right to your actual computer right here. You can share it to your classroom. You can publish to YouTube. Or you can open it in Editor, which is what I do. I open whatever I am going to do in Editor, and it takes it to where I can combine it with another clip that I'm going to make showing them my desktop screen. So I'm going to click that. Now if you had done it, your read aloud on your webcam, you could just go ahead and publish it now. Download it, put it on your Google Classroom, put it on your drive and make it a link, move it on your drive to where you want it for people to be able to access it. You could publish it to YouTube. These are all, it's ready to go. It's already done. But I'm going to go ahead and put a second clip where they can see the text on. So I'm going to open it in editor. All right, and that is ready to go. And you can see now all I need to do is make another clip and then I'm going to use the plus sign to add it in here. So the way that I make clips um, for where they can actually see the text is two ways. One way is I could open a tab here that says to get epic. Now this works if I am not really um, excited about one specific text, like if I'm open to trying, I don't know, an informational text on a subject, and I can log in here and get Epic. I can do another tutorial of Get Epic sometime and how I use it, but it's got so many resources and so many books that are really good, and you show it on your screen, so you can just go ahead and read it off the screen. Your kids see it, and it's really easy. So that's one way that I do it, but that's not the only way that I do this. So the other way that I can do it is I can do a PowerPoint, and that's what I've done for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because I really wanted that particular book, and it wasn't on Get Epic, and I couldn't find it online. And I actually took pictures of the pages and put it on a PowerPoint. It took a, a minute, but it wasn't, like, terribly hard to do. But I just took a picture with my smartphone and then just go ahead and put those pictures on here. And that was nice because I was able to kind of separate it and plan out when I wanted to do it. And at the end, I always have like a little um, question I want to ask them that's a comprehension question they have to answer. So for me, using PowerPoint worked the best as a way to share the book I wanted to share. So I'm going to go ahead and actually record for my kids the next chapter that I have to read for them right now. And again, I'm going to go back to that little arrow with the, the, um, the little pink arrow icon. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose again, desktop and record. And this will be making my clip that I'm going to put together with my little welcome clip that I'm going to share with the students. So I'm going to click record and here we go. All right, boys and girls, here we are. We're going to read chapter 28, 29, and 30 today. Keep your eyes on text as we read. Try to read with me, and let's see what happens next. Our next chapter is 28, Only Charlie Left. 
All right, so when you stop recording your reading, you're going to end up with a piece of um, recording like this. And it will show this is the clip you just made right here. And you can listen to it like I showed you before. But what we want to do now is we want to merge the read aloud we just did with the part where I talked to my student at the beginning. So it's one um, clip all together, one little video that goes together. So what I, you're going to do is you've already opened up your self talking to your kids in editor and what you have over here in editor is this is where you add clips you can add any clips that you've recorded or saved either on your computer or on your google drive but this is one reason why it's so nice to have it connected to your google drive because i can go here and then i can just pick the last thing that we have recorded now they make themselves a little file called screencastify where all your screencastifies will go and it's organized by date so I'm going to pick the one here that I just made with the read aloud and put it in my clip. All right, so now it's popped up and you can see that I had this clip, which is my little self, my little introduction with me talking to the kids. And then I have this long clip of the read aloud where I'm actually reading the book to them. So I always check to make sure my transition between my talk to the kids and my starting of the reading is a smooth transition. So you can start here and you can play it and you can see where it goes. Play as much as you can. All right, here we go. All right, boys and girls. And that looks pretty smooth. There is a tiny part there I don't like, and this is optional. It's just me being particular. I don't like where they can see my PowerPoint before I came in there. So I am going to go ahead and move this just slightly back and you can cut out pieces. So if I push, push the cut icon here, it'll cut off that little piece at the end and just kind of trim it up. So I'm gonna do that. And then you can see this is the little piece that's trimmed. I'm gonna make sure it's right. All right, boys and girls, here we are. We're gonna... Okay, so I don't like that little part because that part right there where you can see where I'm starting my PowerPoint. I want to get rid of that. So you can, now that it's cut off from your big piece, you can just trash it. And now that transition will be a lot smoother right onto my screen. So it's super easy. Like I said, the editor here is so intuitive. Like I could go ahead and crop it so you can see close, closer shots of me. Um, I could write on top of it and put text on top of it. Um, I could undo or redo what I do. Or I could just keep adding more and more clips to make it bigger and bigger. But this is pretty much all I need for my read aloud is my little intro, my read aloud, and then I have at the end my little comprehension question that's all part of that clip there. So now all I need to do is go in and put it where I want to put it. I can download it to my computer or I can save it to Google Drive right from this app. And that's it. That's all I have to do. Now it's going to be in my Google Drive, and I can easily share it anywhere I need to. I can share it from my Google Drive. I can share it to YouTube or to my Google Classroom, or I can email it to a, um, a coworker. It's, it's a shareable file now that's downloaded. And that's it. So that's all I, you have to do. And then you have yourself a file with your read aloud in it. So it's really a great resource, and I have used this a lot over this distance learning time and I hope this has helped you. I hope it's clear. If you have any questions about how to use this, go ahead and comment below and I'll answer it and, or um, reach out to me on Instagram and let me know um, if you need any help with this. So thanks guys. Have a good day. Happy teaching. Bye.